Welcome back to The Health Bridge. Dr. Pedro Shojai here with Dr. Tammy Moralia. Hello. Hello. And we are back on set with Tom Maltair, who is one of our favorites of all time. Uh, you are the functional medicine uh, nutritionist to the stars. I know every single doctor <laughs> that we respect actually calls you when like a new study comes out saying, what do you make of this? Wow. So, I have an academic crush on him. Academic <laughs> crush. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Brain envy, like Daniel Ackerman <laughs> 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 so man, you keep up with it. And so one of the things that keeps coming up and one of the top things that people complain about in uh, a clinical setting is fatigue. Uh, yeah. So today let's talk about why are we so tired? What do you think, Tammy? Yeah, well, have you ever had a patient who says, oh, no, I'm good. I got enough energy. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, males who got dragged in by their wives who claim that they have nothing wrong, but they're about to blow up. Yeah, Those guys are just yeah, fine. <laughs> but everybody wants more energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so there is a physiological basis for this, mm -hmm. right? And if we start looking out uh, at some of the clues that, that, you know, the environment might be, you know, gleaning, we can glean stuff from our environment. We can glean stuff from what's happening to our cells. Yeah. So that's what we're here for. Let's, let's dig in and yeah. let's kind of nerd out on this and talk about sure. why we're so tired. That sounds like a plan because I'll tell you what my clients need it and I'll tell you every single person out there who's not whistling and waking up and saying, man, this life rocks, they need it too. So let's yeah. hit it. So what are kind of the basics, right? So energy is this thing and we create yeah. energy, we glean, we get energy from macronutrients that yeah. we break down and then we run through this this Krebs cycle or this electron transport chain and all sorts of geeky stuff that we could get into and it starts kicking out ATP and we yeah. could use that like cash. Why are we so broke? Yeah, well, let's look at the entire process of energy creation though. You know, mm. energy on this planet actually comes from a star. Mm. So we're the third rock from the sun and those rays from that star actually strike a plant and that plant then harnesses that energy in the chloroplast via something called photosynthesis, right? Photosynthesis, taking that light and changing it into something. What are you gonna synthesize it into? You're gonna synthesize it into a packet of energy called a carbohydrate. I mean, that, that process is so fascinating. It's biology Magical. 101, right? Yeah. But what are you talking about? What you're talking about is these plants actually have little mouths on the bottom sides of the leaves called stomata. And they inhale CO2 from the air. They physically take the air into the plant, right? And then they suck up through their little rootlets. They suck up this water, H2O, right? And you use those carbon backbones from the air. And then you use the hydrogen and oxygen from the water, oxygen from the air and you turn it into the CHO, this carbohydrate, okay? So with the help of the elements of the earth, you have fire, air, water, earth, right? And boom, here's energy. This is life. Mm. Now, when you have packets of energy in plants that either get ingested by animals and then you have to unpack them from the animal or you unpack it from the plant directly, the entire process has to take place through something called digestion. So digestion is basically breaking the packet from large to small. You want to cleave off all the little components and you want to get to those little carbohydrate packets and you want to get to the little amino acids that you can actually turn into carbohydrate packets. And you want to get to some of the fatty acids that you can turn into something in the Krebs cycle. It'll basically give you energy, right? So you have to break the food down. Now, how many people come in into your clinical practices say, Hey, I rock at digestion. I've got an iron stomach. I never have gas nausea bloating. I don't even know what diarrhea is. My bowel movements are completely normal. What do you mean? Okay. One, one bowel movement a week isn't normal. What, what? That's what I seriously have heard. I said, well, what's normal? Well, you know, once a week. Yeah. But I think that's a big problem is that people say, oh, well, I eat well. And there's two parts to that. I was just talking this morning that I had a patient and she just said to me, I don't think your program's working. I'm still tired. And mm. I said, can you write down everything that goes in your mouth for three days? Oh, I was so surprised. And I think that people don't realize the power of, of what we're eating. Mm. and how it can translate into your energy, mm. like you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's information. Absolutely. So the weird thing is, right, we're not slowing down enough 
to engage in the digestive process anymore. Mm -hmm. We're all so busy, we're all so stressed. And you know, digestion starts in the brain, right? The cephalic phase, the envisioning, the smelling, the having sensory you know, interaction with your tongue, with the foods, right? That entire process then ramps up your gastric juices, it gets your pancreatic enzymes ready, your bile, you know, your CCK that secretes both bile and pancreatic enzymes, boom, gets ramped up when you're engaged with your food, mm -hmm. right? Michael mm -hmm. Pollan, he basically says, you know, yeah. eat at a table. It's one of the mm -hmm. most important food rules. Eat at a table. By the way, a desk is not a table, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's in a car and everybody's in a, slow down, look at your food, take a couple of deep breaths. Shoot. You know? Oh my gosh, are you kidding? <laughs> Mm -hmm. There is actual trials where people look at the number of chews, 10, 25, and 40 chews, and they determine how much energy you can get out of almonds, for example, in this one trial I'm thinking of. And it's exponentially greater amounts of energy you can get by chewing longer. You so, can lose weight by chewing more when you think you're done and ready to swallow. It's amazing how much we leave on the table, so to speak, and it just goes right through. Remember what this is, right? Mastication is breaking from large to small, right? It's a whole start. Okay, so if you want to get packets of energy from your food, break it from large to small. And then what are you going to do? You're going to swallow. Eight seconds, lower esophageal sphincter. You should be in a pool of acid. And this acid is going to literally be very similar to battery acid. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're talking a pH of about 1.5, 1.7, maybe 1.9 for people who are less healthy, or maybe a 2.0. It's still very similar to battery acid, right? Now what happens is, in a lot of people as they age, what we're finding is that acid level, that pH level, goes up, the acid goes down. And it used to be, 10 years ago, when you look at the studies in Japan and whatnot, that age was about 50 years old. So something Yikes. happened. <laughs> Something happened after 50 years old, and all of a sudden, right? No longer stomach acid. But now we're seeing in literature it's gone from 45 to 40. And I have a friend who teaches about gastric acid at Bastyr University, and he's showing people at 35 and 30 now with insufficient acid. So somehow, and we'll get to this, somehow the acid level is going down. Well, let's imagine your acid level is going down. And that's naturally. And then we have tons of people who artificially lower their acid with prescription and over-the-counter medication. So let's, let's see what happens when the acid goes down. The acid goes down, and what's it responsible for doing? Well, imagine, just imagine this, okay? I've got a beaker, don't try this at home. I have a beaker, okay? And the beaker, in one beaker, I've got battery acid, okay? pH of 1.2, whatever. Or, or stomach acid, 1.5, 1.7, something like that and I pour in a T-bone steak, right? Just chop it, right? Watch that thing sizzle and disintegrate, and over time, even the bone starts going away, right? Yeah. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take a beaker, and I want you to pour table vinegar into that beaker. And then I want you to put that same T-bone steak into the table vinegar. Mm -hmm. Now, how long do you think it's gonna take for that T-bone steak to break down the table vinegar? It'll putrefy before it breaks down. Days and days, right? Okay, so if you aren't breaking your food down, what's one of the first symptoms you're gonna have? You're gonna have gas, you're gonna have nausea, bloating. you're gonna have bloating, right? And what is that diagnosed as if you go into a doctor's office? Indigestion. In digestion, the inability to break from large to small, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the first thing you're going to give somebody if they have a diagnosis of indigestion and you're conventionally trained as a practitioner? Oh, 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 I know. <laughs> oh, what is it? I know, isn't it the craziest thing? We're taught to give something that lowers the acid. Lowers the acid, raises the pH. They're yeah. called proton pump inhibitors. They're called H2, H2 blockers. blockers. They're called acid blocking medications. Sometimes for a whole 24 hours with one pill. Okay. So you went from having a pH close to battery acid to now having a pH close to table vinegar. Now, are you able to break your food down as well and trap those little packets of energy, those trap packs of energy, are you able to open them up and utilize them? No, absolutely not. Mm. So is it possible as people are aging, is it possible as they're taking certain medications 
that they're not able to break apart the food and get the energy from the food? Absolutely. So that's a huge piece of the story, but I want to tell you one other piece of the story. FDA came out with a warning on the taking of acid-blocking medications. Osteoporosis? Well, there were some fracture issues and whatnot, but there was another one on a nutrient deficiency. Oh, yeah. Hypomagnesia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you're taking this PPI over time, you can actually end up with a deficiency in magnesium in your body. Now, we all know what magnesium is. It's a mineral, right? Magnesium yeah. is probably the most important mineral because it's a cofactor. It's needed for over 300 different enzymes in the human body. Wow. Do you know why? Why it's needed? Yes. No. Tell okay. us. In the body, form equals function. Okay. Every little thing, because of its shape, will interact with something else. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about this concept just for a second. I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's called information. Okay, one form because of its structure will bind to something else and they will mate. In that joining process, both are changed. This shape changes, this shape changes, then they come off. Now, because this one has changed shape, now it can mate with something else. And you see it passes on via the form these little signaling process where each little shape, once it's mates, it changes the compound that it mated with. Well, the form of magnesium mates beautifully with something called ATP. Hmm. So it turns out that magnesium is actually the carrier of energy in the human body. So all the interactions that you hear of that magnesium are important for are actually energy-related reactions. They need ATP. And you can't test for magnesium deficiency no, well. No, you can't. You know, it's terrible. Most of the stuff you find on standard blood count analysis is useless. The B12, well, it doesn't really tell you what's happening in the cell with B12. Magnesium, it doesn't tell you what's happening in the cell with magnesium yeah. at all. So you can't really look for magnesium insufficiency. What do you, what do you see? What do you hear? On the intake form, it'll be something like, Hey, if someone drops a book next to you, do you startle easily? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Late at night, when you're trying to get to sleep, do you find that you have a monkey mind? It's just racing. You can't stop your thoughts. You know, you're just always on edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I got that. Do you ever get like little muscle spasms? Do you ever get like little energy Twitches. insufficiency cramps, things like this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is your energy consistently low all the time? Yes, yes, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Constipation. You, well, another great one you might have a magnesium insufficiency, mm -hmm. right? So someone might say, great, I'll take magnesium and I'll feel better, right? You're not gonna be able to get it well, if you don't have enough acid. Possibly. So you wanna go back upstream. Now, here's the interesting piece. Are you ready for this? Acid, seems like it's so important. Gotta break down your food, right? You need the amino acids, you need everything from your food. You want the magnesium, absolutely. It's broken apart from the food, you absorb it. Gotta have that, right? But check this piece out here, is that a proton pump inhibitor, the medication that stopped all that acid, is what's called an ATPase inhibitor. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, let's, let's break this up for you. It means that it stops the pump that produces energy to allow for acid to form. All right. Is there anything else out in nature that we're exposed to that blocks energy formation? All right. 2015 is where we're at. In this year now, we know there are billions of pounds of chemicals being imported or produced in the U.S. every single day. The last monitoring that was done by Environmental Protection Agency in 2010 showed us there were 74 billion pounds of chemicals being imported or produced in the U.S. every single day. We know from chemical reports from companies that a lot of those have gone up exponentially. We have a lot of chemicals. Out of the 87,000 chemicals that have been introduced onto this planet right now, I have not seen a single one that doesn't have some sort of manipulation of the mitochondria. The mitochondria is where we produce energy. So is it possible that some of these chemicals that we're exposed to in the environment 
might be changing acid secretion. All right, hmm. let me tell you a story. You ready for this story? All right. So this is a weird idea, right? People with low energy, people with low digestion. I'm having these people coming into my practice in Bellingham, Washington, okay? Whatcom County, Bellingham, Washington. Just a pretty clean place, Not one would think. Beautiful. So these people are coming into my clinical practice, and I'm noticing some of these people that are over the age of 50. They're coming in, and all, you know, they're having terrible gas, nausea, bloating. They can't eat raw greens. They can't tolerate a lot of foods, lots of food sensitivities. These symptoms are flaring, and they'll happen at certain times and then dissipate, and happen at certain times and dissipate. And I'm confused, right? I have this load of people coming in, right? Just happens to be one day that a person comes in and I'm looking at their file and somebody else calls and says, I'm so sick today, I can't come in, can you mail me my supplements? They only live a half an hour away. I'm like, oh, no problem, I'll mail your supplements. So I pulled their file up and I looked at the addresses and I said, whoa, wait a second here. What's going on? These guys are almost neighbors, right? So I started pulling some of the other files who had similar symptoms, right? And I looked at the addresses and you plot them on a map Every single one of them lived right next to a raspberry field. Uh-oh. So I called up these people and I said, wait a second, you know, can you do me a favor and chart when your symptoms are flickering and when the people outside your house are spraying? Mm. And it turns out it was fungicides that they were spraying on the fields. And if you look at the literature closely, they're one of the most potent mitochondrial disrupting chemicals out there. So what was happening was these people's symptoms of indigestion were responsive to these mitochondrial inhibiting chemicals. Do you see where I'm going with this? Now, is it possible because of the coal-fired power plants and the air pollution coming over from China on the brown cloud that NASA has been tracking, lands on the western seaboard, is it possible that these chemicals could be inhibiting mitochondrial function? And the answer is absolutely. Then one has to ask, is it possible that we have this 50-year-old age bracket that would normally people their acid would decline, now is going down to 45 and to 40 and to 35. Is it possible that that's going down as the levels of chemicals are going up? That's incredible. So that's the hypothesis that I'm throwing out on the table. And I'm saying, then, let's look at some cases. If that's the case, some of my senior clients who are coming in with mitochondrial insufficiency, digestive problems, whatnot, if I give them mitochondrial nutrients like magnesium, B vitamins, coenzyme Q10, is it possible their symptoms improve? Yes, they do. But there's one key element that's missing. And that one key element appears to be amino acids. So if they've been ATP insufficient, gastric acid insufficient, what's the primary purpose of gastric acid? Breaking apart peptide bonds, freeing up amino acids. Mm -hmm. And what many people forget is there was a beautiful review in 2008 in the journal Circulation that talked about branch chain amino acids jump-starting mitochondrial function in people whose digestion was not very good. So you start going, oh my gosh, you know, look at what we have here, right? This is just chemistry unfolding in front of us. Not able to break down, nutrient insufficiency, not able to build proteins, not able to make the body function very well, give the body what it needs and pull the whole cycle back on center. Does that make sense? This, well, yeah. it makes sense. Not where we thought we were gonna go. Yeah, well, you, you <laughs> know. how fascinating, it's like a train. Yeah. <sighs> I gotta say, this makes me sad because grandma used to give us chicken soup when we were sick and it would kind of pre-digest some of the amino acids. It would pre-digest some of the, the protein so that it'd be easier to absorb. And that is kind of the, the wisdom of, of eating soups but when you're not feeling well. It seems like, A, all of us should be eating soups. Uh, uh, but there's a piece to this that just makes me so sad is there was a commercial with Larry the Cable Guy standing in front of a hot dog stand saying, yes. 
and this this is like this is everything that's wrong with America, right? And he's saying back and and Larry the Cable Guy, shame on you, um, <laughs> shame on you, right? He didn't make the commercial, <clears throat> huh? Yeah, well, no, but he took their money. Shame on you. And, and so basically, he's sitting there saying, you know, I used to get all this ind indigestion and right. acid and da 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 da, and um, it used to suck because I couldn't eat this hot dog. But now I take this. I don't remember which one of the antacids it was, like Tums or one of them. And now I could go back to eating like an asshole, right? And this is what is being sold <laughs> to America as yeah. a solution. So yeah. you have the toxins on one end, yeah. what you're proposing, which is the this cascade of toxins that's also bringing down our, our ability to digest and break down the proteins to create amino acids. And then doctors being trained to give these proton pump inhibitors and, and acids to then support this collapse of the energy systems. And then everyone's saying, I don't know why I'm so tired. I need caffeine. I need Starbucks. I need drugs, Frappalapa. I need frappa, frappuccinos, right? Because I don't feel well. Yeah. And what you're talking about here is, it, this is revolutionary stuff, so. Well, and you know, you're talking about patients that come to you because they're not feeling well. I do a lot of digestion analysis on every patient Great. as just so a important. screening. Yeah. Because they, my patients that have the best diets mm. are some of the most surprised at it's, kind of, it's a poop test, but mm -hmm. we get to see what is there and isn't there, and it's shocking how awful people's digestion is. It doesn't matter what you put in. Mm -hmm. If you're not breaking it apart and absorbing it, it doesn't matter what you put in. There's a lot of things at play here that I'd like to address. You know, you've, you guys have said some great things, like the coffee that people are relying on these days. And you know what happens with this, right? Let's go back to natural cycles. Let's, let's pretend we're a bushman. I love the origins mindset, right? So let's pretend we're a bushman and we are outside and we're sleeping beneath the stars and the sun raises early in the morning and that sun then shines into my eyes and via my closed eyelids I can still sense that. It will start degrading some of the melatonin that I've accumulated overnight and because of my low blood sugar my cortisol is starting to rise, right? And the cortisol will rise to a point, and the melatonin will degrade to a point that all of a sudden, boom, I'm awake. Hmm. I've been fasting the entire night, hopefully eight to 10 hours of, of good solid sleep. And then as I've been sleeping and I have these signals that say, get up and feed me, right? The brain is saying, I want something right now. Give me some glucose, give me some amino acids, give me something, you know, fatty acids. I need something. So boom, you wake up, you're active you're gonna go grab some food as soon as possible. Hopefully you had some stored from the night before. As soon as you start eating, you start regulating those hormones again, those neurotransmitters, right? So the cortisol coming in, the melatonin, and things start balancing out. You can have energy smooth throughout the day, right? What happens though in today's day and age <laughs> is someone will go and grab a liquid cup of cortisol. Start off their day with a liquid cup of cortisol, right? Zoom, now the cortisol's blasting up here, right? To a point of going beyond hunger. Now they're no, not logically thinking like, you know, I should slow down and eat a little bit. The cortisol's through the roof. Now I'm in fight or flight mode. That's not rest or digest mode. It's way off kilter. So all of a sudden you're not eating until sometimes, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning, 1 p.m. for some people, and they're having a light lunch, and then they get home, and then they have these massive dinners. Right? And then they're just feeling like a slug. And then because they're still digesting too much overnight, their, their level of sleep doesn't go too deep. And so this whole cycle of sleep and you know, rhythm of nature and light and food doesn't happen. There's a reason, folks, this is called break fast. Hmm. Break the fast. So a lot of my clients that have weight loss resistance, cholesterol problems, adrenal problems, all I'll say is eat your dinner for breakfast. Hmm. Just stop this cycle. This is ridiculous. Mm. Calm yourself down early. Eat a decent solid lunch. You know, have a, a, a dinner that's okay too, but it's not this smorgasbord that you're just snacking and snacking and snacking until the second you go to bed, right? And then just doing that, weight normalizes, energy increases. So following the cycles itself can assist. Mm. There's a piece here that I want to kind of um, unpack a little bit more because I think it's really important is 
if we're hydrochloric acid deficient, yeah. a lot of functional medicine doctors will say, here's some hydrochloric acid to help you along the process. But how do I fix that? So now my stomach acid isn't secreting as well. I mean, it sounds like part of what you're saying is you got to decrease the amount of toxins uh, in your, the, the load of toxins in your life and not live next to a raspberry field <laughs> <laughs> like your poor patients. But then what, what do I do? Like, how do I get this back? How do I digest that T-bone naturally? Mm. So if you want to increase the acid, and we know that acid is a very energy-dependent pathway, what do you have to do? You have to nourish the mitochondria. So we have to pull back in the magnesium. We have to mm. pull back in, perhaps, if they need CoQ10, B vitamins, things like this. We have to make sure they are producing lots of mitochondria in each cell. What, what, what causes the body to do that, by the way? It's called exercise. Isn't that the fanciest thing ever, that mm -hmm. when your body needs more energy, it makes it? <laughs> Weird, right? Mm. I know. One of the few mm. things that can boost intracellular coenzyme Q10 versus taking CoQ10 is to actually exercise. Yeah, mm. I can't right. exercise, I'm too tired. Actually, you'll get more energy, literally. I can't exercise, I'm depressed. Yep. Yeah, that's... One of the best medications for depression actually beats every medication out there is exercise. So you start out slow, right? You don't want to exhaust yourself because we now know that when you do heavy, heavy burst training or you do ultra marathons or whatnot, that you cause a leaky gut and a lot of stress on your system. Yeah. You just want to ease into the exercise and then you'll watch how your body adapts. Give yourself a couple of weeks. Anytime you need a change in your life, give yourself a couple of weeks. So start out super slow, maybe even walking five minutes a day or whatever it is and watch what happens. You know, it just builds slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly and away you run. Well, Pedram gave me a challenge, actually. Yeah. I'm doing a lot of confessing, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so when you're thin, people think you're fit. And mm. that's not true. I Go. have not had time to exercise for a very long time. I had a big yeah. book launch. I have, you know, a family, a full practice, bodybuilding, moving, etc. And I just said to him, one of my goals is I want to start moving my body again. Yeah. And he said, okay, I want to see a video. You're going to send it to me. Go get some weights and go get your running shoes and just do literally two to three minutes, you know, That's it. three or four times a day. Oh my gosh. Go walk around the block one time, go lift some weights, five pound, 10 pound weights. And so I got my challenge. Boom. Do it, sister. My yeah. buddy Jay. And I had to, th I even was in this mindset of like, I have to find time to exercise. And I know that I do currently walk around the block, but there's so much, there's always something more you can add. Little, little bits add it, up. It doesn't take much at all. Mm -hmm. So my buddy Jay, right? He was one of Gene Fonda's original aerobics dudes, right? Okay, I so he, he works for Apple now. He's a big wig, right? Wow. But he did this fitness challenge where they tried to determine with a couple other coaches, like what was the best thing should you do? heavy, hard training like they do on all these weight loss shows and stuff, or should you do moderate training, or should you ease in? And he did the ease in group. And basically, you know, you just do your tolerance level. If it's 30 seconds, because you're extremely overweight and exhausted, then it's 30 seconds, mm. but you do 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, maybe you do 45 seconds and you build up and you build up slowly. Those people had phenomenal success and they kept the weight off and they kept the mindset that exercise was fun and rewarding and built them up. Mm. Uh, That's yeah, probably the most down. important thing mm. is what your experience is, what's your relationship with the idea of exercise. Because if you think, oh, it's torture, I'm gonna sweat, this is painful, then what's the motivation? Yeah. But if you think it's like, this is my time for me, this is me taking care of myself gradually within my own capacity, my own means, you know, and my own time, right? Who doors open up and all of a sudden your life is a lot easier. And I would love to bring up more information from you about the sleep and energy. Mm. You know, you talked about the origins and how we went to sleep well, let's look at that. when it was dark. Mm. Yeah. And and how how important is sleep oh my gosh, to you, energy? You're joking. So um <laughs> joking. No, I'm not. <laughs> Well, let's talk about this for a second, okay? So um, when I go camping with my children, which I love to do, we hike and camp all the time, um, and you're outdoors, and there's actual research trials on this, you balance with the sun cycles. 
right? So you, you know, 8 to 10 p.m. is when your melatonin is peaking and your body really wants to go to sleep. And at that time, it's pitch black. Either it's pitch black or you're having a firelight. Mm -hmm. And the firelight is at about that 3,500K Kelvin, right? This frequency of warm, yellow, orangey glow, right? It's very calming. Mm -hmm. No one looks at a fire and goes, <gasps> I got to get up and go do some stuff, right? I mean, you look at a fire and you're like, oh, so man, this is great. I'm so tired. Oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're out, you right? A, it's you want so a nice, great. warm cup of tea. And <laughs> right. I love that. Maybe over the fire with the cup of tea. Yes. Right. So, you know, it's, it's something instinctual, primitive, natural there, right? Very much opposed to what's occurring now which is after dinner time, everybody goes off to the television. We have these large screen televisions that are backlit LED televisions and or it's the iPad or the cell phone, Facebook, whatever is going on, there's some sort of light source there. And it's usually that 5600K light, which is that very bright, cool, it's a bluish white light. That's the same midday sun that knocks out your melatonin so you can be alert and awake and hunting and gathering in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. okay? So you're getting those alert wake signals at eight or nine or 10 or 11.30 at night and your body is completely confused. You're breaking down the melatonin and all of a sudden now you can't get to a deeper level of sleep. So it's that delta sleep, that super deep sleep when you're getting down to those really below four frequencies of body vibration when you're just like knocked out Right? What are you doing when you're sleeping? Rest, digest, repair, detox. And mm. memories. Okay, now watch this. So part of the detox process that we're seeing now is that when you get deep down, knocked out, your body actually opens up little fluid channels around your neurons in your brain. And we literally get brainwashed. Mm -hmm. In a good way. In a great way. Yeah. So if you had toxins from the environment building up in your brain, if you had things like amyloid plaques that are precursors to Alzheimer's building up in your brain, boom, you flush them out. Now you wake and you are refreshed and alive and sharp and ready to rock. Mm. Okay, so the sleep process is regenerative on multiple different levels. So if you don't get a lot of sleep, you can't expect, you know, you expend energy and then you have to replenish. Hmm. That's what the whole cycle of sleep is all about. So we have this, what was being called the glymphatic uh, system, right? Which is the, 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 the lymph that goes through yes. the glial cells and just yes. flushes, which yes. most people miss because there's two pieces to this. One is, yeah, you need the rest. And the other is you need that detox, which you just mentioned. Like mm. if you don't, like we're surrounded by this, like, you know, your raspberry field, is everywhere, right? <laughs> is everywhere. The bus that just passed yes, by, yes. The, the, the local park. We just the airplane. Got, yeah, I, I was just talking to Kelly Brogan about this, and she's they were doing they were looking up glyphosate levels yeah. in kids that only ate organic, yeah. um, their whole lives, and they're like, why the hell is this kid lit up with glyphosate? And I'm like, oh, the local park. Mm -hmm. So they're spraying this stuff Soccer everywhere. fields. Soccer yeah. fields. Yeah. So they're spraying stuff. Everywhere. So when are you gonna detox if you're not doing it at night? Mm. Um, now we're, okay, so we're talking about light, and we're talking about magnesium and, and the other part that leads to sleep. So people take magnesium to sleep well, right? Is there a correlation? Like, is there, like, does the magnesium do something to the ATP to drop us down? Uh, no, that's, that's, so there's a, a relaxation part of calming down the excitatory receptor in the brain. Now, here's the thing about natural compounds is they're multi-talented. <laughs> they're doing a lot of different things at yeah. once. And one of the key things about magnesium is you have the excitatory receptor in the brain called the NMDA, N-methyl diaspartate receptor, that keeps you kind of firing all the time. Well, magnesium sits right in the middle of that darn thing and shuts it off. So it's now you're just like, oh, I can go to sleep now. Yeah. Hmm. Not to mention there's other facets of your muscle fibers, you know, calcium contraction, muscle relaxation. So your muscles relax, your mind relaxes, and boom, you're out. So yeah, there's multiple interesting, different things. Interesting, but if you're not able to break down that T-bone and not and get, get the, magnesium, the magnesium, then you're more likely to be anxious and you're mm -hmm. more likely to be insomniatic. Hmm. There's another aspect we could get to, but before I do, okay, remind me of this, I'm gonna get to tryptophan. One thing that we need to be conscious of is if you're tired in the middle of the day, 
you need to flush your brain out with fluid. You can't do that by falling asleep and delta rumming and <laughs> you know, the day. Del yeah, you can't. But what you can do is you can pump up your thigh muscles and get your circulation going back to your brain and back. So by sitting on your bum for longer than 45 minutes, you actually build up free radicals in your brain. So pumping, getting up, just bending over, doing something every once in a while can give you more energy. So it's interesting. Let's get back to the fact that when you have low acid, you don't break apart proteins. Now, proteins are amino acid chains. You have a bunch of these little amino acids. The least common amino acid in the human body, in the human diet, is tryptophan. You're lucky if you get about 1.5 grams per day. If your acid is in the tank, you're getting less than that. Mm. Why is tryptophan important? It's the precursor to serotonin, the happy neurotransmitter, and melatonin, that sleep neurotransmitter. So if you're deficient in tryptophan, you may still be anxious and you may still not sleep very well. So that can affect your sleep-wake cycle as well and your energy ultimately. So something else to consider when it comes to gastric acid and digestion. <laughs> wow. It just goes to show, right? So eating correctly and food combining, I mean, do you, do you leave a certain amount of um, space in the gut? Like, so if you, if you have, say, digestive acid that gets in there and you fill, it, you fill the tank up kind of thing, harder to break down, more work for your gastric lining and all that. So is there a way to slowly work back Absolutely. into? Absolutely. There's the 80-20 rule, of course. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overeat. So every time you do overeat, of course, you're going to dilute out the acid to a certain extent. You'll cause maybe putrefaction of the food itself, which may lead to bacterial imbalance issues. You don't move your food along as easily. If you wait in between meals, your food moves along easily. And then that can contribute to bacterial imbalances if you're eating too much, right? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Perhaps you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. Here's something. Let's look at what bacterium might do to energy. So if we are not born in, in a regular manger, right? Surrounded by animals and, and cow dung and, you know, we're, we're sanitized and said we're in a hospital. We don't get a lot of, of microbes. And then we're given antibiotics. Your mom's given antibiotics at birth, right? Or you're born C-section. Born C-section, right? Something that keeps you from getting a lot of bacterium colonized in your gut. What do bacteria produce? Bacteria produce a lot of B vitamins. Mm -hmm. They'll okay. produce riboflavin, they'll produce biotin, they'll produce key factors, thiamine, that are needed for the processing of energy. There's something called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. You pull in glucose into your cell to use for energy, and there's this little complex that needs certain nutrients to function. Many of those nutrients can be replenished by having beneficial microbes in your gut. Hmm. So once again, now that we're doing the antibiotics, now that we have the chemical exposure, the pesticides, the herbicides, which we now know kill microbes in our gut, they could be robbing our production of energy providing nutrients from the microbes. My goodness. We could also just have plain old inflammation which is going to be an inhospitable environment for the bacteria. Well, anytime you have inflammation or you have detoxification, usually you're going to use nutrients to tame that down, especially the detoxification process. Should I go through that real fast, the phase one, phase two? You put a handle on something in phase one, you pull it out with phase two. Anytime you're pulling out a toxin, you pull it out with a nutrient. Anytime you pull something out of the body with a nutrient, the toxin leaves and so does the nutrient. Hmm. So you could be depleting yourself B12, B6, folates in the methylation process. You could be... Even if you do methylate, if, yeah. some of us don't. Right. Right. Yeah. MTFHR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's a possibility of you just peeing out a lot of excess stuff. So, in essence, it sounds like you had it right in origins, right? If we could get outside, how did you feel, by the way, when you were in the African oh, come on. savannah, right? Filled with life. 
filled with light. Dude, you wake up and you have shivers up your spine when you're outside all the time, right? I mean, I yeah. drink from glacial streams and then when I'm pulling out my tent stakes in the morning, I eat the soil, you know, and then I go and I harvest these wild mountain blueberries and mountain ash berries and I'm just, you know, come on, you're just like, yeah. you're buzzing, right? Yeah. All you have to do is separate yourself from that life. Separate yourself from natural lighting, separate yourself from exercise, separate yourself from clean air, water, and food, and you will watch your energy go down. Hmm. So in essence, all I'm saying is, get back to the core of where the energy came from. The air, the water, the soil, the food, the plants, let's get it. God, you know, here's the problem is, that is so beautiful in its promise. And then the system that we live in is saying Starbucks and Larry the Cable Guy's, uh, you know, antacids. And so the solutions that the millions of people are suffering from are adding to the problem where the solution really is to take care of your gut, eat better, and avoid environmental toxins, which also simultaneously makes you be a consumer of healthier products so that you don't add to it so that the next generation doesn't have to deal with it worse. That's exactly right. So it sounds like out of your frustration, you're asking me, Tom, what's my first step? Yeah, how do I, like, how do I sort this out? Cool. So what I would say is, make sure you get some sleep. That's an easy one. Focus, and if I can't sleep? Focus on that eight to 10 yep. at night. Make sure you don't have that bright blue white light an hour before bedtime. Maybe if you are still racing in your mind, you can consider magnesium, work with your healthcare practitioner for proper dosing for you. If you go too high, you'll know, <laughs> you'll get the runs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking at that magnesium and then going back upstream, talk to your healthcare practitioner about why you have gas, nausea, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. Maybe you have some digestive challenge. Maybe you need some herbs, supplements. Maybe you need to change the foods you're consuming, but really, Vegetables themselves assist with digestion. Vegetables themselves are rich in magnesium. Do you remember where that energy came from, from the sun? That chloroplast? Did you know that very much like our heme in our blood that runs around, where we have iron in the middle of our heme, plants have magnesium in the middle of their chlorophyll. Hmm. So we can get, by eating the plants, the constituents we need for the production of energy. And I think, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't do all of this. I can't get, you know, eight to 10 hours. The, my kids go to bed and that's the only time I can get my work done or, you know, I can't have time to cook. I think just one small thing is, it really adds up, you know, just going to bed 15 minutes earlier every week. Mm -hmm. Just 15, just creep it back and mm -hmm. if you get one hour extra sleep you're gonna feel it yeah. just add vegetables to one meal a day instead of eggs have eggs in sliced tomatoes or something mm -hmm. you know I don't think it has to be an all or none I think that a lot of people get discouraged that they can't do it all well because they're broke they're cash broke which means the energy that would be considered cash they don't have to invest in a lifestyle so they can't see their way through it and so if you can put a little bit more cash in your pocket then you have some spending power and so it's like let's mm. not eat mm. like a fool let's get out in some sun let's stand around to get a standing desk and do a few squats during the day and then you start to see that kind of build and then you could start investing you feel better so then you could do things mm. with some energy and enthusiasm and I think and it gets easier yeah yeah but if you don't have it you don't even you can't muster it from anywhere because your cells just don't have enough power to run your basic physiology let alone the enthusiasm to go climb a rock or you know go drink off a glacier I mean that's <laughs> <laughs> or eat dirt <laughs> or eat dirt which is awesome by the way it's actually not bad you just can't chew it yeah rocks are stronger than teeth you learn that fast mm -hmm. so you know that's an interesting concept that you're giving us right there right the analogy that I was talking about in one of the books I wrote was it's like a checking account, mm. right? You're either making a withdrawal or you're putting a deposit, mm. right? Withdrawal, deposit, withdrawal, deposit. Just be conscious of what you're doing and make sure that you're making a few deposits every day. Mm. That's all. Whether it's a little bit of exercise, a little bit of vegetables. And some people actually, you know, 
the fatigue is coming from a food sensitivity reaction. Mm. We see that so much. That's why I had to write that book, The Elimination Diet. Mm -hmm. The gluten and dairy in some people, that's all they do is take that out. And all of a sudden they feel 20 years younger. Mm. So it depends on the person, but be conscious, you know, what makes you feel better and what makes you feel worse? Are you making a deposit or withdrawal? Deposit a little bit each day and next thing you know, you have enough saved up for a vacation. <laughs> I'd love that. And the last thing I'd like to add to that is if you think Starbucks is a solution, that's a high interest credit card. <laughs> yeah, and you go bankrupt yeah, and yeah. have a breakdown. Yeah, you just can't get your cash flow back in line yeah. because okay. you're borrowing from your adrenals and just can I break that down real fast? Yeah, I would love that. Okay. You're going to break down a frappalapa? So you've got, <laughs> you've got high fructose corn syrup that's in the flavoring, right, that goes into that. Oftentimes that'll be above 30 grams. According to the research, it looks like all it takes is about 30 grams per serve before you give yourself a pretty tremendous leaky gut, throw off your microbes in your, your intestinal tract. You allow for a massive increase of inflammation in your system, right? If you continually ate something that had 30 grams or more of high fructose corn syrup per day, or fructose from high fructose corn syrup, so it's probably 75 grams of high fructose corn syrup, then you could give yourself non-alcoholic steatic hepatitis, or NASH, right? Within a couple of months' time, you're heading towards that realm. So it doesn't take much, all right? You can completely throw off your system by consuming that on a, a daily basis. Then you're also consuming the caffeine. The caffeine may also cause a permeable gut in susceptible individuals, but what it definitely does is it goes up to the brain and it will interfere with the adenosine receptor that calms down your mind, that allows you to sleep. If you have slow caffeine metabolism, it'll throw off your sleep. So now you're anxious, you're not sleeping very well, right? So you have this false sense of energy, mm. but you're making withdrawals. You're mm. not making deposits. So if you ever cut off the caffeine for a few days, you'll notice how That's when you realize you it's are. a drug. Yeah, then you right. realize, you know, you've been replacing some of the necessary calories at breakfast time. You've been throwing off the whole hormonal cycle. You know, boom. Some people can do it, some people can't. Mm. Just be conscious. It may not be a deposit. It may mm. be a withdrawal. I love this. Tom, great to have you here. <laughs> I know we're running out of time yes. here. Where can people find you, by the way? WholeLifeNutrition.net is my website. Yep, and you can see me living there all the time. Yeah, and uh, and if you don't see him living there, it's because he's picking some blueberries up at a glacier <laughs> somewhere. And he's gonna be at my place helping me plant my garden. <laughs> that's right. That's, yeah. right, that's right. Awesome, great to have you as always. Uh, again, uh, so nice having smart people on the Health Bridge. Uh, let us know what you think uh, wherever you saw this, whether it's iTunes, YouTube, on the websites, whatever, and uh, love this guy up because he's here doing this for humanity's future. Thanks for being here and thank you.